And as we receive, amen, is, amen, remains. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We are gathered here this morning to pay our last respect to the life of a brother, a father, uncle, a friend, cousin. And I guess for some reason you're all touched by his passing, and that is why you are here at this time to pay respect to this person's life. To the immediate family of Mr. McLeod, I'd like to extend our condolences to you, to mother and father, to the brothers and sisters and other relatives of Mr. McLeod. There are so many questions that we can ask. And questions like, why Fritz? Why now? But there are some questions we'll never get any answer for in this life. And I may never be able to supply you with the answers. But there is one greater than us who will be able to do that in the appropriate time. But one thing I can say to Fritz's mom and dad and brothers, there is a friend that really sticks closer than a brother. And one who is truly a friend and a help in time of your greatest needs. One who comforts, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to encourage you to be courageous. And you're going to mourn and you're going to feel sorrowful. But there is one who can give you strength in the time of your weakness, and that is Jesus, our Lord. As we commence our service, let me give some instructions. All right, we have a microphone that is provided on my left, and that persons using and um, participating in the program may utilize that microphone. For those who are coming here for the first time and might need to use the restroom, it is to the rear of the building. You just go to my right and just follow, and it will take you to the back of the building. You will find the restrooms there. Just want to also say that make your tribute as concise as you can ever make them and be as respectful as you can ever be. This morning, our moderator will be Deacon Minister Oral Senior, and he's there on my right, and our musician is Brother Lincoln Smith, and I am Steve Moncrief, the pastor of the assembly. So at this time, I'd like us to keep standing as I invite to the lectern our moderator for today, Deacon Senior. Praise the Lord, everyone, and good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I too must offer my condolence to the family at this time as you grieve the loss of your loved one. 
What does the Bible record? Jesus said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. So take strength and comfort in the word of the Lord. We will be singing at this time our opening hymn, How Great Thou Art. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider the world thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. Then sings my soul. 
of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art. Everybody sing that sing. Yes, sings my soul, my Savior, my Savior God, to Thee. Yes, He's great this morning. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Jesus is greater than our situation. And things. My soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou Hallelujah. Lord, yes, God, he's great. great and mighty Jesus. God is great. Yes. And he's greatly to be praised. Yes, he's great. Yes, he's great. Praise the Lord. At this time, amen. We'll have the opening prayer by Reverend Steve Moncrief. Praise the Lord Jesus. Could you just stand for me, please, as we show respect to the word of God and to prayer? Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Father in heaven, faithful, merciful, gracious God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we come before you this morning, firstly, Lord, with thanksgiving and praise and honor to your name. For your words declare that in everything we must give thanks, in the good times and in the bad times. Lord, my God, in birth and in death, we are appreciative of you, Lord, because all works are ordered by you. So today, Lord, we have gathered together to pay respect, Lord, to the life of a deceased friend, father, brother, cousin, Lord Jesus, Individuals have come from many parts, my God, of this community. And some may even travel from outside of this country to be here. We want to say thanks, Lord, for your greatness and for your doings. Lord, we are here with mixed feelings. I pray, God, that you will be the comforter that we all so need in the time of our bereavement. And so, Lord, I pray that you will minister to the hearts, to the mind, and to the lives of every individual that is in this place today. Lord, but especially, my Lord, to the siblings, to the parents, Lord, those who are so closely bonded, Lord, to Mr. McLeod. I pray, Lord God, that you will minister to our lives. Let your word, my God, find root into the heart of these people that are here today. People for whom you died to express your love and your desire that they be with you. So I pray God that you will give us a fair day as we go through this day's proceedings. In the name of Jesus Christ I pray, amen. Praise the Lord, God bless you. Praise, Praise the Lord. The Lord. Praise you may be Thank you. God Amen. Bless. Praise the Lord. Our first lesson, it will be read by Dolores da Costa, sister, from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 
reading from verse 1 to verse 8, and you can use the microphone that is provided on my left, after which we'll be having a selection by Nayoki McCoy, amen, family friend. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Ecclesiastic chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stone, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to render and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. Eight and last. A time to love and a time to hate. A time to war and a time of peace. Here ended the reading of the God's holy word. Praise God. Amen. All right, Miss McCoy, family friend, is she here? All right. All right, so the second lesson will be read by Tamika Wallace niece, Psalm 90 from verse 1 to verse 12. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hast formed the earth and the world, even for everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and saith, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in the sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as, and as a watch in the night, thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning, in the morning, in the flourish and and in the plant growing up, in the yeah. evening and in the cut down. Yeah. In the morning and in the flourish and growing up, in the evening and in it cut down. And where? For we are consumed by the, the thine anger and by the warm wrath of the ye throw good. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. 
for all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The day of our years are three scores and ten, and by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labored and served. For this is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thine fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our art unto wisdom. Earth and a portion of God's holy word. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Family, teach us to number our days, apply our hearts unto wisdom. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning sun. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that goes by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that goes by the way. You are precious. More precious than gold. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. amen. At this time, I want to pause to amen. Recognize those who are on the Zoom platform or those who are on YouTube. Praise God. Watching this funeral service today of the late Fitz, Fritz, amen, McLeod. Praise the Lord. You're welcome, amen, to Grace Tabernacle. Amen. It's time to take the tributes. Praise the Lord and remembrance. So the first tribute, amen, set of tributes will be coming from Talia Cole, stepchild, after which Laura Dwyer McLeod, wife, amen, will be coming. So you come in this order, Talia Cole, stepchild, followed by Laura Dwyer McLeod, wife. Are they here? Right, signal Talia Cole. Pass. All right, so we move to the remembrance Nikisha McLeod, caregiver. That person is here. All right, thank you, caregiver friend. Meeting and getting to know Chacha has been a pleasure. Has been a pleasure to me. He was fun and straightforward. A man to tell you as it is. We would sit and talk for hours. So he was comfortable to ask me to do anything for him. He would tell me how he loved his job. And because of that, he took pleasure in doing it. When I asked him how long he's doing Taylor for, he would say, before you're born, long, long time. He would tell me about the years he worked in Spanish Town. And being in Spanish Town, he, he came across the good, the bad, and the indifferent. He would come to Chacha for, to fix anything with or without money. And whatever you want to be done will be done. But if you take it for a habit, he would say, no man, go in your pocket. I remember one time I wanted some money to borrow. Didn't know who to turn to. So I went and asked Chacha. His reply was, Lucky, let me tell you this. Me tell myself, me no business a who, 
I don't lend nobody no more money because I don't have no luck to get it back. I said to him, never give it back, man. His words were, his words were you will not tell me anything else. And we both laughed. So when I returned the money, him said, you need to fit you. I said, with what? He said, you're lucky. You think me didn't go ask so far. So we shared a laugh. Chacha was a man that took his job serious. You could rely on him, or when you give him the material late, you would sure to get it back. When school time, as early as 3 a.m., you would see Chacha on the veranda working. I used to see him just sitting there. So the first time I saw him well dressed, going to country, he said, What, Chacha? I saw your hat. He said, Lucky, I hope you think me get my name. Me a Chacha boy. I saw me get my name. A beer class man wear. We laugh. In February, when he told me he, was, he wasn't feeling well, I said to him, have you been to the doctor? He said, yes. He said he get a letter to go to the hospital. I told him I would accompany him to the hospital. So up and down, me and Chacha, to the hospital, to the clinic. He said to me, Lucky, ah, how may I go pay you for all of this? He said, Chacha, no worry yourself. I'm not doing this for money. I will go to make all these appointments. When I went to Yui to make the last set of appointments, the dates were the 20th, the 26th, and the 14th of September. When I told him, he said to me, at that time, they didn't give me to live by. He said, why you say that? And he said, oh, then if me sick, and then I give it till we are September. I wasn't expecting this. So when they had me to them at Yui on the 20th, I didn't know the 21st of July would be our last conversation. His last words to me was, make sure you come early tomorrow. That was a Friday. I didn't know I would be in a shock that caused a pain in my chest. I never expected this. I wasn't tired of going with him. I will never forget that Friday, never. I miss you, Chacha. I may your sweet soul rest in perpetual peace. Praise God. Thank you, Miss McLeod, for your remembrance of late Mr. McLeod. All right, we have some more tributes. We also have. Um, to open tribute, so those that would like to, you can buy for those two space. But we have Lisa and McLeod, daughter, after which Mr. Leslie Stoddard will be doing their tributes. So we, we come in this order, Lisa and McLeod, daughter, and Leslie Stoddard, after which we take the two open tributes.
Good morning, everybody. My name is Jodie, and this is Renee. We're Lisanne's cousins, and we'll be reading this message on behalf of Lisanne. All right. So, my name is Lisanne McCloy, the one and only daughter of Fitzroy McCloy. Thank you. The day I found out you died, my heart was torn in two. One half stayed with me and the other stayed with you. I think of you in silence and often speak your name, but all I have left are memories that will stay the same. I often lie awake at night with tears upon my cheeks, remembering all the memories I know that I will keep. Memories like when we used to buy me jerk chicken every Friday and when you used to call me every single day when I moved to England. Your relationship with my kids and the fact that you didn't get to meet Mimi breaks my heart. But I know you're safe now in your new home with angels around you, with no more pain to endure. The best community tailored, loved by so many. You are with us all in our hearts forever. It will be and are, sorry, uh, we are all going to miss you. You are the greatest father. Love, listen. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Stoddard. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This afternoon, we all gathered here to pay tribute to Mr. McLeod, popularly called Beagle. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, when the Hearst arrived over by Shopper Boulevard with Mr. McLeod, Body, believe you me, I have to cry. It's a long time, ladies and gentlemen, that I never cry. Because I remember the last time when one of my niece passed away and I cry, I have to reach university, get a stroke. So I never wanted to cry because I never went over to look at Mr. McLeod's body, who is one of my good friends, ladies and gentlemen, Biggs. When I look this morning and when I see Biggs casket, I tell you, tears come at my eyes. Mr. McLeod, is living in the Chaplin community of which he was born. Ladies and gentlemen, today I don't see no one, neither lady nor gentleman, who is going to replace Mr. McLeod. He was an excellent tailor. He built for ladies and he built for gentlemen. And I tell you, this school here, it's a morning in the parish. I'm not speaking about church pen in particular. We're talking about people come from different parts of the parish to take 
their children uniform to Mr. Biggs. Trust me. So, ladies and gentlemen, all I can say to the McLeod's family this afternoon, you got to cheer up, Mars Heiser, and Miss Mavis, who is our good neighbor. And before I should leave this podium this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to sing a verse of a song which I always sing at funeral. So, on behalf of the McLeod's family, you can sit back and relax and enjoy the first verse. So, I'm going to ask you to fasten your seat belt and prepare for takeoff. Say, take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. Say, take your burden to my Lord and leave it there. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. Praise God. Amen. Two open tribute. Praise the Lord. Amen. Always good to hear Sir Stoddard. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Truly, I'm glad to be here to give a tribute for my nephew. Biggs was my second nephew, and I am his last uncle. And me and Biggs share some good time together. Even one of the time, me and him used to work together. And every Christmas, Biggs would take the journey to my mother's house to look for his grandmother. And even when my mother was very sick, Biggs said to me that he might pray to God for God to keep my mother until the pandemic is over, that my mother can get a wonderful funeral. It never worked that way. Bigs leave before my mother. And shortly, maybe about a week after Bigs passed, when I went to, came down here at the setup, at the um, candlelight. And after I go back up, call my sister and say, well, it was good. And I call Bradley, his brother, and tell him the same thing. And just as I, hung up the phone, I went to church, and by maybe about 12 o'clock, my um, wife get the call that my mother left us. And I said to myself, so what it is, it is this, to know that her grandson gone, and she just follow the grandson. Last week, son, Saturday, was my mother's funeral. And me and Biggs, we have a wonderful time. And you know, as what the gentleman here talk about, Taylor, I can say Biggs is one of a kind. Because even this suit that I have on is big. Build this suit that I have on. 
And I miss him so much because I have no more tail again. And I miss him so much. Because, you know, when Biggs was around, when my, if my sister called him and said, well, if you can't do anything, Biggs now said no. Biggs was a family person. Biggs was a person who you can depend on. And for that reason, I miss him so much. Take your journey, Biggs, until we meet again. God bless you. song for the family, but I just want to say this. Chacha, he was a good friend of mine, also Gloria. I have a son that is 32 years old. Chacha is his godfather. And this, I, I remember this Saturday when I take him to have baby. Chacha and Gloria was the one that stay at my home with my other two sons for me to go into the hospital to have Dujan. So Chacha and Gloria is Dujan Godparents. Chacha is a nice person, a humble person, and also a kind person. I just pray that his soul rest in peace. And I just want to encourage everyone here that, are, that is not safe, that it is appointed to man once to die, and then the judgment. And there is no repentance in the grave. No is the acceptable time to give your life to Christ. So I encourage you today to do that. A country where no twilight shadows deepen. An ending days where night will never be. It's a city where no storm clouds never gather. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What joy it will be when we get over yonder and join the tron around the crystal sea. A place where there will be no misunderstanding And from all enmity and strides we're free No unkind words to whom the hearts are spoken Oh, this is just what heaven means to me what joy it will be when we get over yonder and join the tron around the crystal sea. We'll meet our loved ones and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. of my precious Jesus, someone whose image others love all sees. And when they crown him king of king, thank God I'll be there. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. Yes. 
means to me. Praise God, what joy it we when we get over yonder and join the throng across the glassy sea to meet our loved ones and crown Christ forever. This is just what heaven means to me. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. Surely it be a joy when we get over yonder. Praise God. But there's a requirement for us to reach there. Praise God. Jesus told Nicodemus he must be born again. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll be doing the offering. Amen. I'll be singing when we all get to heaven. So we'll be collecting an offering at this time. Praise the Lord. All right. So give cheerfully as the Lord bless you. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will over spread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful trust in serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toys of life repay. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we will sing and shout the victory on war to the prize before us soon his beauty will be whole soon the pearl the gates will open. We shall shred the streets of gold. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and show the victory. Get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and show the victory. Oh, let us then be true and faithful, trust in serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the joy of life repay when we all get 
to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will say and shout the victory. Oh, on what to the price before us so this beauty will be whole soon the pearly gates will open we shall tread the streets of gold when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Blessing them in such a way that they will have a desire to give. Lord, we thank you what we have received today. Pray that you be used to honor the glory of your name in the service for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll be doing a floral tribute, and it will be done by, amen, the community. Praise the Lord Jesus. Till we meet. Again, so praise the Lord, all the representative to do this floral tribute. Praise God, you may now proceed. In Jesus' name.
the me more than this my child what will your answer be precious Lord I love you more Precious Lord, I love thee more 
that all of these more than work, more than fame, and more than the world, precious Lord. invite the congregation to stand oh yes precious Lord I love thee more than all of these oh God more than wealth more than fame more than the world praise the name of the Lord amen I'm going to invite Reverend Steve Moncrief he's going to come amen to speak to us after which we'll continue amen in our service praise God Praise the Lord Jesus, everybody. Praise the Lord again, everyone. Everything that have breath, praise the Lord. It's just a good thing to give praise and honor to the one who holds life. Amen. Praise God. From the scriptures, I'd like to read from Revelation chapter 21. And I'm going to be very brief with you. And from verse 11 down to the end, it reads, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. From St. John chapter 3, and verse 16, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise the Lord. I want to speak to us in brief about the two extremes. The two extremes. Praise God. Lord Jesus, I pray you minister the heart of every individual today. Lord, help us to understand my God, your purpose and why you do things. Lord, my God, let your word find root into the heart of every hearer today that man will hear and comply. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Good to, you may be seated. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, life is the greatest commodity that God has blessed the human race with, life. It is because of life why we can enjoy everything that God created. So when life is done, 
everything is done. And in life, we must so live that we enjoy the fullness of it. When we enjoy life to its fullness and in a purposeful way, in recognition of the Creator, that He has given you that period of time, or that period which is called time, which is between birth and death, that it should be so used in a way that it will purchase for you extension of life, which we will call eternal life. Many of us have invested in insurance policies. And in many of these policies, you know, you have high premium attached to it. But many of us who have done so would not have benefited from the premiums or from the, the, the policy, um, the, 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 what I call it now, from the premium. It is for the beneficiaries that are left behind. So you say, buy my insurance, 10 million, 20 million, whatever it is, and you are paying all of this, amen, monthly money to ensure that this insurance is maintained. You are lucky if you are with some of these insurances, they are component that will take care of some sickness. And if you are never ill, you will never benefit from this policy. And it will be pain, pain. But what you have done, you have invested so that some loved ones of yours can be taken care of after you are laid to rest. And hopefully, they are the type that would have laid you to rest in a dignified way after you have, would have invested so much money to ensure that, you know, you are taken care of after. Life is precious. However, life is not very long. It's precious, but life is not very long. Now, the word of the Lord tells us that he saw the dead small and great stand before God. And a book was opened and another book. And what was presented in that chapter in Revelation 20 was an extreme position taken by God himself. Not by man. Because in this position, you and I will have no control over that particular position. So this is God's affair and it is one of the extremities of God and this stream this extremity speaks to one the great white throne judgment where God is going to judge this world according to his works and he said and him that sat on the throne from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the book so open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works it will appear from the scripture that the works of the ungodly will be so much that it could not be held into a book but as they have books in which to contain the evil deeds of mankind. But there was also provision made 
there was another book that was open and that is called the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books the dead and according to their works the sea gave up the dead that were in it death and hell were delivered up and they were judged every man according to their works and listen and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire that is a second death in first corinthians chapter 15 if you read through you will find a passage that tells us that the last enemy that shall be destroyed or going to be destroyed will be death so death too amen will have its time when it will not be able to affect mankind anymore and when that times time happens friends it time is going to change from time into eternity there will be no more death amen but man is going to live on scripture says and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire it is another this is an extreme position by god himself not by man what the word of god says that god will do will cast every man whose name is not found written in the book of life into the lake of fire and their man is going to burn and burn and burn it seemed to be an extreme position that god amen has taken which many praise god do not believe that god will do because he is loving he is merciful he is kind praise god but god is also a just god whatsoever you say you are going to reap amen god is just if you sow peas you will not reap corn you're going to sow reap peas if you sow praise god unrighteousness you cannot get the reward of righteousness unrighteousness is going to be your portion and that is why that there were two set amen of books that were written a book and books the righteous was judged out of the book the unrighteous out of the books but whosoever name was not found written in the books were cast into the lake that burned with fire and brimstone thus said the word of god not past among creed and god's word is true and final amen like it or not it is complete it is final it's one extreme position taken by god upon the unrighteous of the world that the unrighteous going to be cast into where the lake of fire and brimstone because of this extreme position that the faithful loving god who makes mankind like himself is going to be executing upon sinfulness he took another extreme position to ensure that we do not amen fall to this amen extremity in saint john chapter 3 amen and verse 16 it says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life another extreme position god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son his extreme position all of us amen as men who have children which one of us will sacrifice your child to save yourself or save your neighbor a good man doesn't do something like that a good man would rather to give 
himself to save his children and if anything save his community but you will not want to sacrifice your own self your son that's why God took on to himself flesh to come amen and die for sinful humanity the extreme position God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you believe in the Son of God, amen, what is written in Revelation chapter 20, amen, you will not go through that extreme position. You can save yourself from that. It is the love of God, praise God, that has been manifested to man. For God knows, praise God, the consequence of sin and what is going to be unleashed upon this land. He knows the provision, praise God. And because he loves us so much, he doesn't want us to go through that, praise God. He made another plan, another extreme plan, praise God, where he sacrificed himself for us. Extreme position by God. So life after death is going to change into eternal life amen life is short but eternal life is forever 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 pastor i've never seen any dead come back to life i've never seen any walking on the street again and you might be right Jesus became the first fruit of them that slept. Amen. He's the first to raise from the dead and rose, praise God, where mortality put on immortality. Amen. Never to die again. Jesus Christ, the first. But let me tell you something. Which good man would want to bury your children? I'm saying the parents in here would like to bury your children. Raise your hand. You would like to be the one to bury your child. Raise your hand. I don't think any of you, if you really love your child, would do that. No good parents want to bury their children. You rather than your children grow and get old, and when you get old, amen, as old as you can be, You'll rather them bury you, don't it? That's what you want, don't it? Yes. If you and me, with our simple minds, can think like this, as a father having two children, I would want to see the day when my son, amen, lie before me in a casket and I'm there looking over. It's not a nice picture and a nice feeling. Sorry, Dad, it's not a nice feeling. But if we can feel this about ourselves, think about God who has created us in his own image and likeness, and he's the father of us all. Do you think it is any pleasure for God, amen, that any of us should die? It's no pleasure. God wants us all to live and to live our long. God desires us to live him. To do what? To outlive him. I desire my son, my daughter to outlive me. God desires us to outlive him. And you know, since we cannot outlive him, praise God, we can only live as long as he lives. No longer. It is not his desire that we should die or that we should perish. And that's why he makes provision that all of us live, amen, as long as he lives. And that's why it is written, praise God, in St. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. He 
believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. It's God's desire that all of us live with him and be with him forever and forever and forever. Hence, the extremities he made provision for us to escape. How shall we escape if we neglect such great salvation? How can we escape? Friends, we get accustomed to funerals. We get accustomed to hear the scriptures read. And we get accustomed to hear all kind of fancy the songs sing. And we get accustomed to all kind of fanciness. And we come and we do all kind of things. But I want us to understand. God shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. Every act that you have done today, God is going to bring it into judgment. This moment is going to be brought into judgment. My word spoken is going to be brought into judgment. And it's going to stand up as a word to judge you at that time, praise God, when you stand before the judgment bar. Live not your life to have a good funeral. Don't live. I hear so many persons say, I want to have a good funeral. And we lay aside money to ensure we have a good funeral. Nothing wrong if you have a very good funeral. But to have a good funeral, amen, without Christ, is foolish. A good funeral without a relationship with God is foolish. On Wednesday, you know, I went into St. Thomas to celebrate with a lady, celebrating 103 years and five months old and still moving around. Out of that 60 years of her life, been dedicated to the service of God, soul winning, amen, and caring for people, praise God. Die with a hope to see Jesus. Die with a hope to live forever. Praise God. The scripture says, Amen in Isaiah 65, praise God, there's going to come a time. Amen. When an infant is going to die at a hundred years. But the sinner living and dying, living to be a hundred, praise God, and die will be a curse. Die. Live so long. Not knowing Jesus. Scripture said it will be what? A curse. Not a blessing. Can you imagine? going to close. I have actually presided over a few hundred funerals. More than a hundred. So many times I've heard eulogies, remembrance, and all kind of sayings. You know, I sit and I listen. And you know what I hear? I hear that this man, boy, was a gallus. I'm telling the raw terms that I've heard. Oh, he was a gallus man. This man was a water bird. I love him whites. This man, boy, was a comrade. This man was a shower. And I hear so many. This is how they describe them when they come. And I listen and I listen. And I'm listening to hear that this man had a relationship with God. I never hear anything about that. Never hear that the man went to Sunday school, not even not to Sabbath school. Never hear that he went to church. Never hear anything. But there's a hope for him to sleep on Jesus' breast. Let us be real friends. You cannot sow peas and reap corn. 
You cannot sow unrighteousness and reap the reward for righteousness. You cannot live your life ignoring God and expect to rest your head upon the Savior's breast. Let us be real. And I want us to take this moment and begin to consider your ways. To see where you stand in relationship with God. And there are many who are saying, you know, I have a relationship. You can't judge me. You don't know what relationship I have with God. I have a relationship. But let me tell you something, brethren. There are many persons out there. Man and woman. Living and having relationship. And have lived long. For years. In relationship. That when we come to the end, they cannot lay claims. I like to use my own life. I'm not getting into your business, but my personal life. My mother and my father had a relationship that brought into this world ten children. Ten children. Over a period of 20 years. Then my dad just walked out. Have another family. My mother couldn't lay claim. She was not his wife. The community called her by his name, but she was not his wife. There was a relationship indeed, and it brought for children, but my mother had no claim. She was not his wife. I'm saying many of us say we are having relationship with God. What claim do you have? Have you put on his name? My mother did not put on my father's name in marriage. She didn't do it to legal means. Though they enjoy each other's company. The name is important. If she had put on his name, it would have made a tremendous difference. What relationship are you having with God and with Jesus? Have you put on his name? When you stand before him, praise God, what will your name be? You must be born of the water and of the spirit. And you must be born again. Put on his name. His name is Jesus. You do that in water, baptism, praise God. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given amongst man, whereby we can be saved. What must we do to be saved? Peter replied, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. Not some. Every man who wants to be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you'll be on your way in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That if you walk faithfully, you will be just rewarded. May the Lord bless you. Which of these two extremes, extreme position, do you want? to fall in. Do you want St. John 3, 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son or do you want Revelation chapter 20 where the dead small and great stand before him and if your name is not in the book you'll be cast into the lake of fire. Your name your name all of us names it's going to be written into one of those books. God bless you. Praise him. Do you know my Jesus? Do you know my friend? Yeah.
the end. Do you know Jesus? Do you know? of iniquity you need to hear the Lord saying to you well done thou good and faithful servant live amen praise God in the extreme of the Lord that he loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Praise the Lord. Right, we'll be taking the eulogy. Praise God, the life of Mr. McLeod. Amen. And Ryan McLeod, brother, he will be reading the eulogy. Thank you. Come, Mr. McLeod. Pleasant afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls. Today we gather to honor, remember, and to say goodbye to Fritz Roy McLeod. Until we meet again, each morning when we awake, we know that you are gone. And no one knows the heartaches as we try to carry on. Our hearts still ache with sadness and with many tears still flow. What it means to lose you, no one will ever know. Our thoughts are always with you. Your place no one can fill. In life we love you dearly. 
in death we love you still. There will always be a heartache and often a silent tears. But always a precious memory of the days when you were here. If tears could make a staircase and heartaches makes a lane, we'd walk the path to heaven and bring you home again. We hold you close within our hearts and there you will remain to walk with us throughout our lives until we meet again. Our family chain is broke. <sighs> Our family chain is broken now. And nothing will be the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. In the words of a famous writer, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. If that is true, then Fritz affectionately called Chacha, made a great life. He was the most generous person I ever know. I know many of you would agree with me this morning. The eulogy for the life of the late Fritz Roy MacLeod. Our lives have all been touched by Chacha in some way, but you may not know some details about his early life. Chacha was born Fritz Roy MacLeod on November 10th, 1961 in the parish of Clarendon. He was the third child of his mother, Mavis MacLeod, and the second for his dad, Isaac MacLeod. That union produced ten children, three previously deceased. They lived in Clarendon for a few years until his dad decided that he wanted to relocate and later moved to St. Catherine, where they would spend the remaining years enjoying life and building the family three. Fritz went to the famous St. Dorothy's Basic School, known as Daily Basic School, or we know it as Daily Fried Dumpling, and later went on to Marlemont Primary in the parish. While attending primary school, he was very good at playing marbles and gigs. He would win elastic for his sisters and marbles for his brothers. He was very big in body and could fight very well. His brother that followed him, Peter Lee, now deceased, would always get into fight and run to him for refuge. And when Chacha tried to defend him, Peter would always run and leave him to fight, even if it was ten other guys, but Biggs would still win. He graduated from Marlemont and went on to attend the Old Arbor Secondary School, now called Old Arbor High School. He didn't complete his study at the Old Arbor Secondary due to the fact that he was very industrious and figured he would be better if he was working. So he starts to hide from school to work at a dairy farm for Mr. Doer. By the time his parents found out he wasn't attending school, it was late and they decided to let him continue to work. He then went to learn tailoring and became very good at it and spent several years working at a shop near Young Street in Spanish Town 
until he moved to Garden Hood and made a name for himself as the best tailor in the whole harbor area. Over the years, Chacha would take the time to learn new design in the fashion industry and try to keep current with the trends. Chacha could make from a lady's panty to a man's shoe. I remember one client came to him and asked him to make a Rastafarian jacket a certain way and asked if he could do it. Chacha replied, if you want wings, Pani, me can make it and you can fly. When it was July, he would be up from as early as 3 a.m. cutting materials and designs. And by 4 a.m., he would be on the veranda sewing until it was 10 p.m. I remember 2021 back to school period. He worked so hard because it was a last minute rush. The government decided to open school. The Monday morning after he handed over the uniforms, he was so sick he couldn't even get up out of bed. Chacha was known as feisty and straightforward. He would just tell you like it is without prettying it up. In 1990, Fritz met Gloria and the union produced a beautiful baby girl, Lisan McLeod, in 1993. Gloria eventually migrated for a chance of a better life and Lisan would came to live with her dad. Fritz loved his children and would spoil them. Nothing was too good or too expensive for him to give them. Lisan's mother took her overseas to live with her and after a few years, Fritz met up with longtime lover and the meeting sparks. This would turn out to become something beautiful to the point where they got married. Fritz and Laura Dwyer tied the knot in 2011. The union didn't produce any children as Laura was living overseas but would do her regular visit yearly. However, the distance was never there because you would see Chacha on the phone for hours talking to his bae, giggling like a 16-year-old just found love. Fritz died leaving his mom, 84, Mavis McLeod, dad, 88, Isaac McLeod, wife, Laura, Daya McLeod, two children, Lisan McLeod and Jalil McLeod, five brothers, two sisters, plenty nieces and nephews, a host of relatives and friends. Chacha was good at playing dominoes and would dress up every Sunday and even travel traveled to Westmoreland just to play the game he loves. He was also he was also passionate for race arts and would place his bet here and there. When he lost, you wouldn't, you would definitely know because you would hear him cussing the jockey. Who him? him no good. Him no what a puss come here for. He was a fan of football, and of course his team was Brazil and Arsenal. You couldn't make a sound when any sports news was on. He would bark after you so hard you wouldn't believe. Cricket was also a passion. He couldn't stand West Indies losing. However, as long as the Jamaicans performed well, he was good. January 22, Fritz began to experience some discomfort in his stomach and went to the doctor. He got some medication and that eases his ailment. However, in May, Fritz began to feel the discomfort and was taken to the Maypen Hospital where he was admitted for a week. He came home and would go for his follow-ups. His condition got worse 
and he was transferred to the University Hospital of the West Indies. He went for his checkup on the 20th of July and was admitted. He was scheduled for testing the 22nd. So he, the doctor, and Lucky was talking about it. And he says to them, I'm not sure I'm going to make it until then. They laugh and says, you will be here, man. He told Lucky to come early the Friday morning while his two brothers and Lucky was on their way to the hospital that morning, the car tire blew out. And when they, they checked, the tool wasn't in the car. So they had to wait on the highway for two hours before help came. When they arrived at the hospital, Lucky and Delroy went in while I, Rayon, waited in the parking lot for a spot. When Lucky walked in, she saw the doctors pumping his chest and they barred him off from her scene. She called me and told me what was happening and I went to talk with the doctor after a few minutes and he explained to me that he had three heart attacks and the pulse was very low and it's a chance that if he lives it would, he would be a vegetable. I asked to see him and as I walk up I noticed his eyes open and the monitor was at 69. I said to him, bro, the family loves you very much. But you need to let go. The monitor went down and came back up. I hold his hands. And I said, bro, you fight. You did fight. You did your best. But please just let go and take your rest. Mentor began to drop. And he was pronounced dead at 12.36 with his two brothers and his both side holding him. It's right. It was remarkable, good, thoughtful, hardworking, fun-loving person. He was a person of great character, devotion, integrity, love, compassion, service, humor, above all. Church of believing family, faith, hard work, and independence. He would always say, family is the most important thing in life, and you can't choose them. There are words of wisdom and I will always cherish them my brother Fitzroy McLeod Chacha Biggs Big Red Fatsy thank you for being a part of our lives we are all going to miss you deeply rest in perpetual peace my son my brother my dad my uncle my husband, my friend, till we meet again. Praise the Lord. Praise God. May the Lord add his strength on the family.
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sir McLeod. Right at this time, we'll be doing the prayer for the family. And I'm going to invite the friends and well-wishers to stand while the family remains seated. Amen for prayer. Praise the Lord. So all friends and well-wishers just stand in support for the family at this time as we pray that God will strengthen them as we proceed to go to the cemetery at this time. Praise God. Bow your heads. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. Lord God Almighty, for the friends and the family, Lord Jesus, in this service, bring in mighty God, the loved one, Jesus, to rest. Lord God, I pray for a special covering, Lord, upon this family. Lord God, I pray that you give them the comfort and the strength that they need, Lord, to guide them throughout this time, Lord. Great God, it's a trying time for the members of this family to lose a husband, to lose a father, a brother, Lord Jesus, a son. But I pray in the name of Jesus that you the God of comfort, the God of love, the God that give assurance that you will be with them, Lord. Great God Almighty, as they proceed to the cemetery, Lord, to lay their loved one to rest. Great God, even after this, there will be feeling, there will be lonely moment, there will be discouraging moment. But Lord God, we pray that you will be just surround them with your love and your comfort, Lord Jesus. Great God, and we stand upon your word that, dear God, you're going to be there with them. Lord, you was there with, oh God, Mary and Martha, Lord, and their brother died. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you understand the pain of death, the loneliness of death, that, Lord God, you comfort this family. Lord God, breathe upon them. Let them united, Lord. Bless them. Comfort them. Keep them, Lord Jesus. And I pray, oh God, as they look to thee for strength, Lord, those that are here, those that are overseas, wherever the family that has been attached, Lord God, to this, oh God Almighty, gentlemen, today, we pray for their comfort. Bless, O oh God, the well-wishers and the friend. They too that mourn, Lord, lose a friend, O oh God Almighty, a confident. But we pray, Jesus, that strength will be upon them as we support them in this time. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Praise God. The blessings of the Lord be upon you, family. Praise God. We're preparing to proceed to the Thetford Park Cemetery. Praise the Lord Jesus and our pastor are going to give the instruction at the time. Don't leave. Amen. Don't leave. Praise the Lord. Don't leave. Thank you very much, Minister. All right. So, um, will the... One, two. Mr. Fenerary Derek, could you please come? All right. So, listen to the instructions. Um, the ministers will be going ahead and then will the pallbearers please come pallbearers please come or members of the family oh, yes could you please come and we will be going ahead please stand for me everyone please stand don't leave the building please don't leave friends just stand let us do it with dignity we pay our last respect. Please don't leave. All right, so, yes, sir. Barderers? Yeah.
Praise God. Ready? Just turn the casket from the ears. So the family will be coming behind the casket and then all the well wishers travel behind the family. And we do it like that. Amen. As we exit the building. Praise God. Trials dark on every hand and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to the blessed promised land. But he guided us with his eyes, and we follow till we die. We will understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, they tell the story. Disappointment have prevailed, and we wandered in the darkness, heavy hearted and alone. But we trust him in the Lord, and according to his word, we will understand it better by and by. Say, by and by. 